Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, Song and Story here at St. Philip Lutheran Church in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, glad you're joining with us. Um, as you know, uh, last week we kind of put out some feelers for some uh, hymns. Uh, lots of people responded with a good number of hymns, but uh, if you have some favorites and you want to send them to us here at the church uh, via email, um, either to me or to Arthur, um, we'll gladly take those and work them in over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, so why don't we take a moment now uh, of silence and then we will continue with worship. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket, or, but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men, so that they may see the deed you do and give glory to the Father in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, kindle within us the fire of your love, that by its cleansing flame we may be purged of all our sins and made worthy to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Uh, tonight we're continuing to read from the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, and tonight is, uh, the chapter is titled, A New Beginning. And uh, this is Noah's Ark. Time passed, and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God and were only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain when God saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction, all the things God hates most. Now, Noah was God's friend, which was odd in those days because no one else was. Noah listened to God. He talked to God. He just loved being with God, like you do with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They are destroying themselves and each other and my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? Neither did Noah. Luckily, God knew, and God would show him. A storm is coming, God told Noah, but I will rescue you, I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep and crawl and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb, and don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and sadness and everything that had gone wrong, and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, short for very large boat. Noah's neighbors came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly his boat was in the desert, the desert was nowhere near the sea, and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an umbrella, let alone a boat? But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he just did what God told him to do. When the ark was ready, God said, all aboard. And Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. It started raining for minutes that joined up into hours, that joined up into days, that joined up into weeks and weeks. And the rain joined up into puddles, that joined up into rivers, that joined up into lakes, that joined up into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat that had once seemed so big, suddenly seemed very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves, in all the thunder and lightning, through it all, God was with them. And God kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray, everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore, and it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what that meant. She had found a tree and land. The water was going down. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, out you come. And so they did everyone skipping and dancing onto dry land. The first thing Noah did was to thank God for rescuing them, just as God had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, See, I have hung my bow up in the clouds. And there, in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow made of light. It was a new beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything went wrong again, 
But God wasn't surprised. God knew this would happen. And that's why, before the beginning of time, God had another plan, a better plan. A plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or on his world. No, God's war bow was pointing not down at his people. It was pointing up into the heart of heaven. together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving help among all. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. 
shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.